Even the so-called boring chapters in the Bible can be thought-provoking and you can definitely learn something of value. So I dare you to stay with me right to the very end. There's 24 verses in Joshua chapter 12 and some may accuse this chapter of being repetitious, tedious and even monotonous. I can understand why they would say that but I don't necessarily agree with it. For one, the Israelites would have been excited by remembering, reviewing and retelling the history of their victories. And that's what this chapter is all about. It's a long list of Israel's military achievements and accomplishments. But more importantly than the fighting and defeating of the Canaanite cities is the fulfillment of God's promise that they would inherit all this land. Our word for today is king. And this word king or kings features 37 times in just 24 verses. But the king I want you to pay attention to is not the king of Jericho or the king of Ai in verse 9. It's not the king of Jerusalem or the king of Hebron in verse 10. It's not the king of Jermoth or the king of Lachish in verse 11. It's not the king of Eglon or the king of Gezer in verse 12. It's not the king of Deborah or the king of Gedder in verse 13. It's not the king of Hormar or the king of Arad in verse 14. Are you bored yet? It's not the king of Libna or the king of Adulam in verse 15. It's not even the king of Makeda or the king of Bethel in verse 16. It's not the king of Tebuah or the king of Hefer in verse 17. Are you still with me? It's not the king of Aphek or the king of Lasharon in verse 18. It's not the king of Madon or the king of Hazor in verse 19. And it's not the king of Tanak and the king of Megiddo in verse 21. It's not the king of Kadesh or the king of Jokneam in verse 22. It's not the king of Dor or the king of Goim in verse 23. And it's not the king of Tirzah in in verse 24, this king is the king of Israel, but he's not limited or restricted to one nation. He is the king of heaven and earth. This king is king of kings. Joshua chapter 12 is not just a long list of defeated kings, but if you read between the lines, you'll see that it is indirectly pointing you to the king who is supreme and sovereign, the king who is invisible and invincible. This king is victorious and all-glorious. That's why the Ark of the Covenant rested whilst the Jordan River receded. It was the intervention of the king. That's why Achan was put to death. He had committed treason against the king. That's why the circumcision was significant. It was Israel's loyalty, allegiance and alliance to the king. And you thought this was a boring chapter. Let me leave you with one final thought. This chapter, just like our lives, does not make sense unless you recognise the presence of the king. That's so deep. I'm done. Thanks for watching. For all your queries and comments, questions and answers, observations, applications, reservations and consternations, you can leave them all in the comment section below. And don't forget, sharing is caring. So don't keep the past to be channeled to yourself. Don't be selfish. Go and tell somebody. Admit it. You liked that, didn't you? Hit the thumbs up button. And don't forget to subscribe to the Pastor B YouTube channel. I don't want you to miss any content, so make sure that you leave.